Hello, 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 fun food fans. It's Karen Ricks, head chef here at our kitchen classroom. And there is a distinct chill in the air this evening as I am coming to you live from my living room here in Tirana, Albania. We have definitely made the transition from summer and all the wonderful warmth that that entails to fall. And so I am curled up here with a nice warm blanket and a soothing cup of a Taiwanese lapsang sushong tea. <laughs> oh. One of the special things about this tea is that the leaves are actually smoked. And so there is this real warmth, this earthy aroma that you inhale even before you get to that first sip. It is so amazing. What is your favorite beverage? Warm or cold, brewed or otherwise? What do you like to curl up with? as the weather starts to get a little colder. Go ahead and leave me a note in the comments. I love hearing about all the different beverages that you enjoy. Then grab a cup and pull up a chair as we dive into this continued chat during our Q&A week here at our kitchen classroom. <laughs> So this week here at our kitchen classroom, I am answering your questions. And one of the things that comes up each and every time that I meet a new person in a new country as my family and I are traveling the globe is this absolute shock and surprise that I don't have one of those everyday things that everybody seems to have these days. Uh, in fact, that people are even more surprised to learn that I don't have, as a digital nomad, traveling full time. <laughs> what is that thing that I don't have that everybody else has? I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> That's right. It is 2018 and I am wandering around in new to me cities and countries all around the world, completely and utterly disconnected. <laughs> Wait, you don't have a what? But how do you? <laughs> okay, no. Um, I'm not going to lie. There are times when it seems like having a cell phone might make things a little bit easier. You know, people ask me all the time, but don't you get lost? You know, well, what about your GPS and having a map to find coordinates? Well, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I am not a total Luddite. I love what I do and I wouldn't be able to do it without my laptop and uh, a Wi-Fi connection. And that's a huge part of what allows our family to do what we do as we travel the world. But one of the things that I appreciate about not carrying a phone around all the time is that in those moments of seeming disconnect, when the convenience, the comfort of having that technology readily at my fingertips might make life a little bit easier, that's when I get to practice getting comfortable with being uncomfortable with making connections with people face-to-face, one-on-one, with utilizing my ever-growing linguistic skills to communicate with people when I'm lost or need directions or just trying to figure out where I am and sometimes actually purposefully getting lost and just wandering up and down random streets and See what new to me things I can discover. It's really wild. It's absolutely wonderful. And there is a special comfort that comes in knowing that I am not wholly and utterly dependent on the technology that is a wonderful and marvelous modern convenience. But 
there, there's a sense of independence, of, of self-confidence that continues to grow each and every day that I am able to work without that technology as well. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I have considered it, as I said, you know, having access to a map or being able to call someone and let them know, hey, you know, I'm running a little bit later. You know, I got lost and I haven't found our meeting place yet. What's amazing to me is that so many people that I have met and continue to meet throughout our travels are wonderfully compassionate and understanding with the fact that, you know, sometimes I'm running a little late to appointments and I can't call them and tell them that I'm running late or that, you know, I get a little lost wandering around and end up um, just falling behind an anticipated schedule because I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> and I get caught up in actually drinking in all of the glorious sights and sounds of new to me places. And there's something really wonderful about fully embodying that technological disconnect that allows me to really and fully connect and be present with who I am and where I am in the world. And let me be honest with you, I think that is, no, I know it is one of the things that makes me so much better at the work that I do. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, and my work, as I said, I am Karen Ricks, head chef of Our Kitchen Classroom, and I am on a mission to teach children of all ages how to celebrate life and how to love learning. And here at Our Kitchen Classroom, we do that through food and world travel. And let me tell you, the process of utilizing all of our senses I, I really feel like it's something that we are losing as we lose ourselves in the various screens to which we are constantly connected on a daily basis. You know, I shared some photos recently on social media. In fact, one of my favorite photos that my son has taken of me here in Albania, and we were in a bookstore. Yes, that's something else that's kind of crazy and wild that we tend to do differently from other people. Yes, my family and I are full-time travelers, and we have been for almost two years now, but we also love physical books. We have paid a lot more than we might have if we had a permanent home base in an English-speaking country in order to acquire books. And yes, we do utilize the technology and read electronically all the time. Reading is a wonderful and absolutely irreplaceable skill. It's essential. And yet, there is something different about the physical sensation of holding a paperback or a hardbound book in your hands, of you know licking your fingers so that you can catch and turn the next page, of smelling the, the paper, the different types of ink, and hearing the rustle as the pages turn, of running your finger along a page, uh, sometimes this direction, in order to follow the words on the page, drinking in the images, full color photos in a book. Oh, it's marvelous. And my seven-year-old Sue and I love to curl up in bed uh, every night before bedtime and read books. In fact, we're lost right now in a paperback uh, classic that is so much fun to read. And part of the wonder, part of the fun and the sensation of that is holding the physical books in our hands. Now, I know I'm not the only person who does that. <laughs> and I think it's wonderful, all of you out there around the world who continue to support local bookstores in your area, to support authors and buy physical books. But just like with the cell phones, there's something magical about getting disconnected, about not having the constant pinging of notifications and bells and whistles of people and other apps trying to get your attention. 
so that you can really allow yourself to just get drawn into a story. That is a wonderfully marvelous way to lose an hour or three. <laughs> Are you a reader? Do you love tearing into books or curling up for hours, getting lost in a novel? <laughs> Leave me a note in the comments and let me know what are you reading right now and in what languages and what types of books do you enjoy? <laughs> you know, there's another thing that constantly surprises, uh, not just the parents with whom I'm working as I teach cooking and other educational skills for parents to continue to guide their own children's educational journeys. Um, but with children and adults of all ages, anytime we get together to share a meal. And that is the fact that I truly and literally believe in the concept of playing with your food. Do you like to play with your food? <laughs> One of my students asked me recently, she said, you, you just mean like having fun with your food. You don't really mean like literally picking up and going do, 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 and like playing with your food. Yes, I do actually mean literally playing with my food. <laughs> I have a video, in fact, in my Facebook group to announce um, the uh, welcome to new members. And in it, I'm juggling oranges. <laughs> I mean, actually physically playing with my food. And just like with the phones and with the books, there's something wonderful, something magical almost about ditching the forks and the spoons and the chopsticks and all of those utensils and like literally and figuratively getting your hands dirty, digging in and fully experiencing all the wonderful sensations of temperature and texture and smell and, of course, the taste <laughs> of diving into your food. And just like so many other areas in life where I think technology encourages us to disconnect, really getting your hands in there, really allowing yourself and your children the abandon the fun, the freedom to do something a little unconventional and actually play with your food, it encourages such, such a precious awareness, uh, a self-awareness, uh, a multi-sensory awareness that encourages us, that demands that we be more present. And I think that's really something that people are seeking more and more each and every day, a connection, an awareness, a presence about what we do. These are the things that I teach for the parents, the educators, the caregivers who join me in my cooking workshops. And that's exactly what we're focusing on in our fun family food workshop this fall. We start in just one more week, and I am so excited to take those special parents, those highly motivated educators and caregivers on this deep dive through my latest book, The Ultimate Guide to Cooking with Children, where I share with you techniques and stories and, of course, recipes on how to get more present, how to dive deeper and be more aware of yourself what you love, what lights you up, and what does the same for the children and the other loved ones in your life. And I encourage you to connect with that, to get passionate about it like I am, and to really and truly embrace all the wonderful multi-sensory educational opportunities that we experience and all too often miss each and every day. Now, if you're watching this video and you know that this is something that you really and truly are lacking in your life and desire to experience more, I want you to send me a message. I would love to chat with you and see if this is going to be a great fit for you. 
If you're not sure, if you think, well, maybe, but I want to encourage you to send me a message and let's chat. This has been an absolutely transformational experience for the parents, the teachers, the lifelong students who have already done this work with me. And I want to be able to do the same with you. I love (laughs) answering these questions with you. And I encourage you to send me more questions. What sorts of things are you curious about? As my family and I travel the globe in this amazing global culinary adventure that is the wild and wonderful wanderings around the world of myself, uh, my husband, and our seven-year-old Sue here in our kitchen classroom. We're on an amazing journey, and we want to invite you to come and join us. I will be back again tomorrow answering more of your questions and just getting to know one another a little bit more. So brew up a cup of your favorite beverage and join me right back here again. I'll see you tomorrow.